can you believe it? Like six years ago, I reviewed the original Nier, Nier Gestalt, on PS3. And now, I believe, thanks to Nier Automata's great success, we were given Nier Replicant. Before, it was Papa Nier, now it's Brother Nier, which was only released in Japan. Back in the day, they thought Pretty Boys couldn't sell well, and pff, they were wrong. What's up, it's your girl Lady Pelvic of Pelvic Gaming finally reviewing Nier Replicant, which came out April 23rd, 2021. Or should I say, Neo Replicant 1.22, hold on, I wrote it down, 1.22474487139, which is the approximation of the square root of 1.5. Yoko Taro on his bullshit, nothing new here. From the madman himself, he considers Neo Replicant to be a version upgrade, not a remake or a remaster. He's too good for those labels. We start in a dystopian city dilapidated buildings, a bleak color palette, and it's snowing in summer. Two individuals, a brother and a sister, wearing thick coats just trying to survive. Brother Nier kicks aside some book that beckons him to sell his soul for power. He fights these creatures called shades, dark beings with glowing yellow patterns. The first time he manages to fight them off. The second time he gets his butt kicked and decides to use the book's power. Here is a perfect tutorial. You learn the basics of combat, wield powerful magics, destroying hordes of shades, leveling up insanely fast. After you clean house, you return to your sister, Yona, who suffers from a disease known as the Black Scrawl. The two kids, stuck in a hopeless situation, cry for help. 1,412 years later, we see Nier and Yona living in this humble village. We find out real quickly that Yona is still sick and Nier is taking on local odd jobs to pay for medicine. One day, a story of a lunar tear, a pretty flower that is said to be worth a fortune, reaches Yona's ears. When Nier is taking jobs, Yona seeks out the flower, leading Nier to the lost shrine. There, you find your first companion, Grimoire Vice, an amnesiac tome of vast knowledge, helps you save Yona. Vice explains that she has the Black Scrawl, but with sealed verses, perhaps he could restore her. And thus, Nier and Vice seek out large shades that would likely be hiding a fraction of his power. This story is seemingly personal and is tackled from an intimate perspective, but what I like is how it uniquely extends to everyone. I highly, HIGHLY encourage you to go into Nier Replicant with as little knowledge as possible. I found my second time playing, I really enjoyed how it all came together. There are two acts, the first one collecting sealed verses and the second act collecting tablets. I do want to comment on the second act being very redundant, and unfortunately, you revisit most of the places in Act 1 and nothing has changed. I do like the tonal shift though between Act 1 and 2. There is a bit of an information dump at the end, and I found the second act's pacing to be a bit jarring. Certain sections you have to return to two or three times, but majority of the journey felt fluid. But what good is a journey without freakish companions? My favorite cast of all time is in Nier. First, the main character is a brother, and that was the biggest difference. We have the middle-aged man, Papa Nier, and the little brother who is 16 at the start. I love Papa Nier, and that is very much the nostalgia talking, but Brother Nier really felt right at home. He's lovable, helpful, hardworking, and appreciative. And contextually, it makes sense. Two orphan kids, one of them taking whatever job to make ends meet. Unlike a father, who could just get a real job? There's a lot of debate. Some scenes like the infamous friend scene works much better for a 16-year-old rather than a 40-something-year-old man. Friends? That's right. He's right! Kaine, we're friends now! Let's see! Friends? Yes. You and I are friends now. On the other hand, there are better scenes suited for Papa Nier, as someone who is a parent. There's a lot of debate on who's more fitting, but I think both have their pros and cons, and frankly, I enjoy both. I also think the subtle likeness of our characters read better. In one scene, Kaine says Papa Nier looks like shit. As a brother, she's like, oh, you've grown up. You look like shit. Wow, you grew up. But speaking on Kaine, Kaine is my favorite character. She is a lone wolf with a crude mouth. She is my spirit animal. Kaine is rough around the edges, but her fuck you demeanor just reels you in and Emil, who is quite the opposite. He's a very kind and thoughtful lad who unfortunately turns those he looks at into stone. So he voluntarily wears a bandage to protect those around him. 
And what makes these characters phenomenal is their interactions, how tailored they are. Kaine speaks very differently to Vice than how she does Emile. It feels genuine and gives each character another layer of depth. I also think Yoko Taro does a great job subverting expectations. Kaine, given her dress, you'd expect to be a sexualized character, and she couldn't be farther from it. Later in game, Nier becomes a bit obsessive over slaughtering shades, but he never crosses the line over to insanity. In fact, he keeps a bit of wholesome and kind aspects, which as much as I love my psychopaths, that was really pleasant and refreshing. Brother Nier might have been the biggest change to Replicant, but it wasn't the only. One of the frustrations with Nier Gestalt is the gameplay. Mainly the aiming is janky, and it never outshined another action RPG of its time. Near Replicant, not on the same level as Automata or God of War or Bayonetta, but still was vastly improved. Near Replicant is a real-time action RPG. You string together combos, hold the attack buttons down to do a charge attack, can defend and dodge. Defending at the correct time allows a parry attack, which they made a lot easier. Beforehand, the window was so small, I don't even remember being able to do a parry, honestly. I am an evasive girl myself. Speaking of evading, sidestepping is brand new. It's a slick motion to instantly go behind the enemy and unleash your fury. Sidestepping isn't the game breaker though. It's auto-targeting. It's because of this feature, Nier is an absolute cakewalk. I played it on normal and I struggled not. Never stopped to grind, never felt overpowered, but even so, complete walk in the park. In Act 2, you get access to two-handed swords and spears, which you could switch between any time. As you would expect, two-handed swords are slower but higher damage, and spears are a nice middle ground between one and two-handed blades. As you collect sealed verses, various magics are open to you. Some are about AoE, others pierce in a straight line, you mix and match according to the situation. Another way to power up is to collect words. Use them to attach to an action. Granting higher defense, cheapens the cost of magic, increases magic damage, physical damage, status effects, etc. And if you want even more power, you can upgrade your weapons, which is just something extra to do. It's really just there to make completionists mad with rare material drops. The cool thing is though, with each weapon upgrade, you get a piece of the weapon's backstory. Fighting Shades gets pretty redundant real quick. Hack them to death, or if they block, blow them up with magic. Pretty straightforward, but it's the unique boss fights where Near Replicant truly shines. Sometimes you're fighting two things at once, other times you have to target a specific area. When the boss is out of health, a clock will appear. Destroy the text before the arrow comes around, or else the boss will regain a bit of health and you'll have to try again. Dungeons in shade-infested areas are as varied as the bosses themselves. The first dungeon has some verticality with some Zelda block puzzles. Another, a temple with rules that limit what actions you can do. We have a haunted mansion with fixed camera angles. Hell, we even have text adventures, which is easily the worst part of this game. We even got a brand new dungeon, which scared the shit out of me. Definitely had an element of horror. Now, here's the worst part aside from the reading. Two things. Side quests, some are interesting story-wise, and by some, I mean very few, most are the standard fetch quests. The problem here is there is an indefensible amount of backtracking. Chasing around people, or starting at town A to tell you to go to town B, tells you to deliver a message to town A, then you go back to town B, it's ridiculous. And guess what? You don't have a fast travel option until halfway through the game. You backtrack so damn much that even Vice comments on it. Without side quests, this game is under 20 hours. Hell, there's even a trophy, Light Speed Fighter, for completing the game in under 15 hours. This isn't to say some side quests aren't worth doing, as selling items and doing quests are the only way to get money to buy weapons. And if you don't know, all 33 weapons must be collected in order to unlock Ending C. Oh, we didn't talk about endings. Well, Near Replicant has five endings. The fifth ending, Ending E, is brand new, quote unquote. Well, Actually, it's not. It's in a novella, but now it's just in the game with some extra bells and whistles. I'm not going to get into it as Ending E is a must experience. Don't let's play it, it's 100% worth your time. Unlocking Ending A is playing normally. Ending B onwards starts at the game's halfway point, where you get a different perspective. And Ending C and D are super redundant, affording you a few new extra cutscenes. Ending E, you replay the game from the beginning, and it diverges after a certain point. Gonna be honest, I don't think it's very respectful of the player's time having to replay the last half of the game over and over and over. Mentioned before, replaying the second half of the game four times does get redundant. 
even with the added dialogue and cutscenes, and they are skippable, what really hammers in the frustration is refighting bosses. You clearly deal dinky damage because certain dialogue has to be said. Afterward, you'll notice that you're dealing insanely heavy damage that would normally end the battle in seconds. Realistically, you might as well dodge until everyone shuts up. Other miscellaneous tidbits are gardening and fishing, which for some reason, I got really into. And lastly, Mother's Diary, which is fighting hordes of shades. It's no secret that with a version upgrade comes better graphics, not that it's hard to beat the original in that department. As a professional anime boy lover, I can safely say they did our boy Nier justice. He's an adorable lad who turns into a fucking stud. I also think in Act 2, there's a greater difference in appearance in our protagonist. The dad just has a different outfit and an eye patch thing. The brother actually looked like he grew up. Even the voice is different. Also, new replicant said, texture motherfucker, do you speak it? I didn't notice it while playing, but looking at these comparisons side by side, holy fuck. They went the extra mile. The shadows, the added trees, rubble, rocks, only added to the environment. The only thing I don't like is Kaine. Yeah, yeah, people told me the softer look would rub off on me, but nope, 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 nope. I prefer the old rugged Kaine. This woman has been through some shit. And I get the whole part of her motif is she's a delicate fucking flower, but she just looks too porcelain for me. I miss her looking worn and a little bit fatigued. Her life wasn't easy and she sleeps outside for fuck's sake, yet somehow she's Beyonce and just wakes up like this. Maybe it's just the nostalgia, but I still kind of like the original's look when it comes to characters. I won't say they're better, but I'll always have that fondness. Nier is also known for its unique and ever-changing camera angles. I've always been a fan of this. In certain areas, there's fixed camera angles, others, bird's eye view, entering buildings seamlessly gives us a side view. It does a great job keeping things visually interesting. And finally, they redid the music. If you haven't noticed, I'm pretty attached to the original Nier, and I've listened to that soundtrack for hours on end. Got me through many days of work. I know this OST like the back of my hand, so listening to the newer versions felt off. Almost like they were wrong with slightly different pitches or added sounds that weren't there before. Granted, I got used to it. If you want to hear something really different, jump into Mother's Diary for some hardcore techno versions of Nier's OST. It's actually pretty hype. But you know what the funniest thing to me is? You'd think there'd be an option to switch from the remastered soundtrack to the original soundtrack. No. There's only a remastered soundtrack and Nier Automata's soundtrack. So you could play this entire game with Nier Automata's OST. That was such an unusual decision. And I was playing with Automata's music for funsies for a bit, and it actually works surprisingly well. Another major addition, not music per se, but voice acting. This game is fully voice acted. Before it was only our leading cast, but now it's everyone, which bumped up the quality significantly, and it makes the game feel fuller. Now, my favorite track of all time, truth is it varies. Most of the time it's either Song of the Ancients Fate or City of Commerce, but eh, let's go with some cool techno near. No specific song, just enjoy. Near Replicant 1.22 something 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 is highly recommended by me. Honestly, I, it's kind of hard to recommend the original now that this is out. Listen, I love the original, but this is a smoother experience. Improved combat, extra dungeons, extra cutscenes, an extra ending, and voice acting all around. Near is easily one of my favorite RPGs, sharing a spot with Automata. Having played this before, I enjoyed myself my second time around. And to be fair, my biggest criticism of this game is the side quests. They're the worst. They are super fetchy. They're up there with Dragon Quest side quests. Hate them. And it does get repetitive going for all the endings. Plus, there's the Forest of Myth, which I hate. If you're a reader, you'll be fine, but oh my god. Aside from that, phenomenal characters, a thought-provoking story, and fluid action-based combat. I really hope you guys give this game a go because it is so worth your time. Thank you so much for watching! Top Box is my review of Nier Gestal, the original OG Nier. Or you could just see how my review style evolved. Or if you click the bottom box, you could check out my thoughts on Nier Automata. And of course, if you like what I do, visit my Patreon for access to the Discord, early access to videos, and postcards. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video!